Hello, my name is Kalisha Wilson, monitoring consultant with the Infinite Product Connection of Virginia. I am here with my colleague, Sarah Moore, and I am also a monitoring consultant with the Infinite Toddler Connection of Virginia. Today we're going to review how to complete your initial budget form. Before we begin, I want to orient you to some changes that have been made to our budget form. The form we are viewing will be used beginning Federal Fiscal Year 19, State Fiscal Year 20. An overview of the changes will include some things such as we no longer have a separate initial, mid-year, and end-of-year tab. Instead, these tabs have been combined under one tab that is labeled Budget below. An info tab has been added to allow entry of the infinite title connection name, contract number, and guidance number. Everything else on the page is pre-populated. As noted here in the instructions, Explanatory comments are indicated by a red triangle in the upper right-hand corner of certain cells. When you hover over this area, it will reveal the associated comments. Data entry is only permitted in lightly shaded cells. All other cells have been locked to protect underlying formulas. As we move forward, please remember that you will submit all budget forms via email to your Part C Monitoring Consultant and Part C Technical Assistance Consultant. Together, your Part C Consultant team will review the information submitted and may contact you for additional information, clarification, and or correction. Once their joint review is complete, your Part C Consultant team will convey reports to an appropriate CDHDS Fiscal Office staff member. Let's begin. Naming the file. If you go to File, select Save As, you're going to highlight the word locality and enter in your locality name. For example, if your locality is named Happy Harbor, you will type in Happy Harbor. Once you have done that, you will go to the end of the file name and you will highlight the end of that file name, and you will enter the appropriate state fiscal year. As you see on this file name, it is labeled state fiscal year 20. That will be this current fiscal year. For subsequent fiscal years, you will make the appropriate changes to reflect that current fiscal year. Once you have done that, you want to click Save, and your file will be named for your specific local system. Step two, completing the information tab. You're going to want to click the information tab. It will take you here. And you're going to begin by entering in your infinite topic connection name on line three. Once you have completed that, you will go to line four and enter your contract number. This number should be listed on your contract. On line five, you want to enter your local data universal numbering system number, aka DUNS number, in the lightly shaded block to the right of the DUNS number. Once these three lines have been completed, you have now completed the info tab. All other information on the info tab is pre-populated. Please remember that although the information tab lists a DBACS fiscal contact, your fiscal forms will be submitted on your local system's behalf by your Part C consultant team. If you have any questions about this process, please contact your Part C monitoring consultant or technical assistance consultant. Now we're going to move on to step three, which is taking a look at the actual budget. Sarah? Thank you, Felicia. All right, when you begin completing your budget, you're going to begin at the bottom section of the form, Section D, Revenues by Source. In this annual budget column, Column B, cells 51 through 65, you will record the total dollars budgeted for Part C for the fiscal year from each of the specific revenue sources listed. What you record under Federal Part C funds and State Part C funds must match the allocations listed in your contract. 
be sure to record any unextended federal Part C funds and state Part C funds from the previous fiscal year. If you put a dollar amount under state funds, please keep in mind state funds are state funds other than Part C funds that were originally state revenue awarded by DBHDS to the CSB or they were other state revenue awarded to a non-CSB local lead agency or another participating public agency. These, if you receive any of these items, record them here. Also, if you receive any local funds, you will record them under local funds. Local funds are any funds that are awarded to the local lead agency to be used for Part C. These funds were originally local government revenue. If you receive any revenue from Medicaid, Medicaid TCM, private insurance, TRICARE, or family cost share, please record those amounts for the appropriate categories. Enter any donations that you may receive to include individual or organization contributions to the local lead agency. At the bottom, for in-kind, we are asking you to assign a reasonable value to the cost of office space, computers, copiers, or other support that is provided without charge to your local system. The two lines for other are for any revenue source that is not specifically listed. Specify the source by entering it into the cell that reads Other Specify. This cell may also be used to reflect an expected deficit. We'll talk more about this after reviewing Section A. When you have completed Section B, you will move up to the top and begin Section A, Budget, Service Information, and Expenditures. You will complete the annual budget columns by distributing revenue across these three areas. Please remember that your total budgeted Federal Part C revenues must equal the sum of Federal Part C funds and Federal Part C retained earnings here in Section B. What you record for budgeted State Part C revenues must equal what you've recorded in State Part C funds and State Part C retained earnings. What you record under budgeted additional revenues must equal what is under Part B for all other available revenue sources. In the direct services columns at the top in Section A, you will include all costs budgeted for providing each service, including personnel costs. Personnel costs include salaries, benefits, office space, mileage costs, contracts, and equipment needed to provide services, such as cell phones and laptops. When you're calculating percentages of expenditures that are based upon a salaried employee who provides multiple service types, you will need to divide the amount expended against that employee's average provision of these services. For example, if you have an employee who spends, makes $40,000 a year and spends 10% of their time in assessment for service planning, you would enter $4,000 in assessment for service planning. If they spent 20% of their time in developmental services, then you would add 8,000 under developmental services. If they spent the remaining 70% of their time in providing service coordination, then you would add the remaining 28,000 under service coordination. Also, be sure to include in assessment for service planning the cost of any assessment materials. If you enter costs under transportation. Please keep in mind that this reflects transportation for a family that is listed as a service on the IFSP. This is not travel for a provider. Travel for a provider would be a cost included under the direct service category for that provider. After you've entered all of your costs for direct services, you will move down to system operations. Each entry in this section must be explained on the Systems Operations tab. And just
just a few minutes, Talisha will review the definitions of each system operations category and the expected explanation. You'll notice that State Part C funds are blocked out in this section, as State Part C funds are for direct service only. For the administration category, you can enter up to 5% of your federal and state allocation from your federal allocation to cover this category. When all of your costs have been entered, you need to compare your total costs to your total revenues. Section A and B of the form must balance. If after close examination you determine you have a potential deficit needed to cover the budgeted cost in Section A, you may record the amount of the anticipated deficit under Other in Section B. Please be sure to enter the amount of the anticipated deficit for the year and label the cell Anticipated Deficit. If you are submitting a budget that reflects an anticipated deficit, you must also submit a letter in accordance with your local contract to the Part C Administrator notifying them of the expected deficit. This letter must be signed by the local system manager, the CSB Executive Director, or the person from the local lead agency who signs the local contract, and the Fiscal Officer responsible for the Part C grant. And now Felicia will share with us a little bit more information about filling out the System Operations tab. Thank you, Sarah. Step 4. Complete the Systems Operations tab. The Systems Operations tab is found upon the Systems Operations section of the budget as explained by Sarah, by providing details for each activity, citing a cost for each item. All salary staff, all staff salary information reported must be included, must include the percentage of time the individual spends during the activity and or the full-time equivalent, FTE, associated with the activity. For example, 95% of salary for local system manager or one FTE program manager. Let's take a look at the systems operations tab, at system operations areas listed here on this tab. Administration. Again, notice that the red triangle here allows you to hover over to give additional explanation. Operation costs falls underneath the administration tab. These operational costs are to the local lead agency to administer this contract. Federal expenses not to exceed 5% of the total allocation as specified by Sarah a few moments ago. So that means that you can take 5% of the total allocation amount and note it under administration on your budget form. When you come over to the system's operations tab, you would need to explain how those funds will be used. If that, if those funds are used for human resources, um, for um, part of the fiscal part of administering this, this budget, then that will be captured here, however those funds are spent. Under systems management, costs should be listed associated with the local Part C system manager and support staff. This would include salary, benefits, office space, mileage costs, equipment, and supplies. Costs associated with billing, service authorization, collection of revenue, and system oversight are also included in this category. Under data collection, these costs are for the, to, for the access and maintenance of all necessary resources, including equipment and personnel for communication with the state office, completion of all necessary written activities for compliance with the local contract, and management of data required under Virginia's Part C general supervision and monitoring system. Computers for use of direct service personnel are to be budgeted in the direct service category. Training. Training should include costs associated with training of personnel providing services to eligible and potentially eligible infants and toddlers. Public awareness and child fines. These costs are associated with identifying all potentially eligible children. Other systems costs. This category includes other costs not delineated above 
such as costs associated with interpretation or translation and other costs not delineated above. The amount budgeted in this category must be itemized in the budget sum narrative. Step five, we are ready to submit our initial budget. Please ensure that you refer to your contract due date to know when your initial budget is due. If you have any questions about the initial budget process, please contact your local system, Part C Technical Assistance Consultant or Monitoring Consultant. Thank you for your time today.